American Timelines is a member of the Queen City Podcast Network. Find out more at queencitypodcastnetwork.com. So now I'm obsessed with time. Come on, tell me about the time. Had it all in my head tonight. Had the time of my life. When the words all come down, like blues on Tuesdays come down. Throw it all away. Throw it all away. And welcome to another episode of American Timelines by History for Jerks. And that's right, you're hearing my voice, uh, and I'm Joe, and this is Amy from and History. And I'm Amy. Oh, History for Jerks. Yes. See? You assumed she wasn't going to be here. I'm here. But she's here. I got my bells on. She's got her bells on. She's not feeling great. She's just getting over a another big bout of syphilis. I feel like I'm always like getting over something. Well, you teach I know. people who don't know how to blow their nose or, or know about cover germs their mouth or anything. Or yeah. Wash their hands correctly. Yeah, you teach or... baby kids know, that don't know anything. They don't, they don't know, know nothing. So, I would think, you know, there's somebody should poll like kindergarten through second grade. Yeah, teachers. really. Like, how often do you get sick compared to other people? Right. Well, and I think special needs teachers, especially too. Probably special needs too. Yeah, a little more. Maybe. Maybe. Well, there's more drooling. There's more mouthing of items. There's more. <laughs> Licking think, of things. I do feel like you've gotten <coughs> sick more since you've been teaching the little or ones yes. than you did before with yes. the older ones. Well, I'm more hands on with the little yeah, ones. And you're so. hugging them and all that. And, yeah. You know, wiping their snot all over your face. Uh, all right. You ever see that on so, uh, Billy Madison when <laughs> the, the mother of the little kid was like flirting with him and she like wipes the kid's nose ew, and she's like sexily ew, wiping it all over blah. her booth. <laughs> that's funny. He's that's, like, that's gross. Disgusting. All right. Anyway, sorry, everybody. We left off in 1956. 1956. And we're we're approaching summer. Well, we're in summer. We left yeah, off we are in, June, in summer. And we're jumping in July of 1956. And I'm at the top. I'm in, I'm 4th of July. Well, you're 4th of July. So I think yeah. I have one thing before we start with you. Okay, uh, let's so, move. Let's do yeah, it. So we're jumping right back into the oh, time. Oh, first of all. Oh, we got something. First of all. First of all, um, Happy Pride Festival that uh, Joe visited. Yes. Yeah, so if we have any listeners. I know nationally June is Pride Month, but yeah. in Charlotte, where we uh, kind of, in the Charlotte metro region, Pride is August, which we just got done with, and that was cool. But now Pride can be any month, and in the rural county we're in, Union County, outside of Charlotte, they had their first ever Pride. And if you told me when we moved here 10 years ago that they would have a pride, I would have laughed and said, yeah, right, there's no pride because there's lots of yes. Trump flags and guns and shit like that. Mm-hmm. Um, not a NASCAR, you know, fandom. But there was. There was the first ever Union County Pride in history for jerks. Had a booth. We wanted to support. We don't have a ton of money, but we have. A, we wanted to support, so I bought a table and I represented American Timelines. That's and right. Nerd School and the Gruff and Loud Show. And so met a lot of cool people that wouldn't have known we existed. Most of them were really excited about true crime. So yes. if you're listening to this and you were you saw me at the uh, Tap House uh, tent, because I was, I was sharing it with the Waxhaw Tap House because they're good friends of mine. Um, hello, and thank you for listening. And uh, I apologize if you hate the podcast. <laughs> anyway, but yeah, so and there was a lot of hate there. There was a lot of protesters yeah. who were jerks and awful. But I got to say, I got to hand it to the volunteers of Union County Pride. They did a wonderful job. Yes. Uh, just drowning them out, protecting the children. The children only saw love around them, even though there was hate outside of it. Um, the biggest stir of the pot was a, a gaze for Trump uh, guy with who drives that. We hear, we hear it every once in a while, that Trump train, that, yeah. that, that whistle you hear. Yeah. Uh, it's his big old truck that's covered in Trump stickers. It's oh like one of those crazy God. people like... Like Obama, awful Obama stuff, and like Ooh. stickers all over it, and so he drives that truck that you hear the the train whistle. Oh my it's God. called the Trump. And train. he's gay. Yeah, he's gay, and he's got a big sign that says "Gays Against uh, tra- uh, Gays Against Drag Queens" or something. Or oh my something like God! That. Like, yeah, it doesn't even. I don't know. I'm. Why am I surprised? There's always people that have. Well, you just. I mean, it's like the. Like, hey, it's guy. like the slaves. Yeah. It's like in slavery times, 
the enslaved people that would fight yeah. for the South. And there was yeah, black Confederates that fought, and, and you know, there's always and there's still blacks for Trump, but they're but, very minuscule. One, you know, I mean, we a lot of people know they're getting paid. Like there's yes, there's ads they've seen true. of them. Yeah. Getting, so this guy might be getting paid. This guy just seemed like a nut though. Yeah. But it's just like you know the people surrounding him don't like him either. You right. Know, they you know they don't like him, but they really don't like drag queens reading the children. But and they've just you know, they believe these QAnon conspiracy theories yes. that drag queens are somehow hurting children. Somebody dressed as a pirate yeah. singing children's songs is somehow a bad thing. Right. So, Meanwhile the there's probably ten pastors in the neighborhood that have been arrested for child sexual in that same neighborhood. Yeah. abuse. Well, and just looking at all the people that came protesting, the angry people, like, not to judge or be able to know anybody's sexual orientation, but a lot of them looked like or seemed like they might be closeted. Well, that's uh, yeah, people. and that's a yeah. that's a big prevalent thing of people that are really vocal about mm-hmm. uh, being anti-gay is they're usually yeah. Ashamed of themselves for some mm-hmm. reason because somebody's made them feel like that. So it's sad and it's awful, but the the pride and the love definitely out outshone it, outshone outshined the outshined hate, it. and they were loud and it was so great because they just surrounded the hatred people and walked with them and then sort of said this was the first Union County Pride Parade. These guys participated. Nice. You can always say these, and they weren't happy about that, but no. they eventually left and left everybody alone and. Good. And somewhere deep down, they realized when they got there that, oh, this wasn't that bad. Oh, what are we so mad about? But they can't back down with that. No, thing. of course. So anyway, but Union County has a pride. It was the first ever. It was great. And the, the people who organized it, I was very, very impressed with those folks. Good. So, um, check out Union County Pride and support them if you can. And shout out to the Wax Out Tap House, who has become, I don't know if I told you all this, but they... They were originally going to host the Drag Time Story Hour, Drag Queen Story Hour, yeah. which is for kids, and it's very innocent. It's not sexualized at all, but right. they just assume because they're drag queens that it's going to be a sexualized thing. So all this hate started uh, pouring down upon the Wax Out Tap House. They had a lot of clients that go there and are regulars there that now refuse to go, and they actually told uh, someone who works there, a trans person and their family, that they were only tolerating that person all this time. And so their true colors came out. The true ugly hatred came out from people. Oh. Um, but the flip side of that is word got out that that was happening and they were getting death threats and things like that. Um, so the the LGBTQ community and the supporters and the allies all came out. P Flag got a hold of it, sent nice. out information and said, let's give Waxhaw Tap House some love. So they've been packed with really prideful people in the last nice. few days. They had big events there. And yeah. then, so I can't tell you, I was sitting at the table at the Waxhaw Tap House. I can't tell you how many supportive people came up and said, I never heard of the Waxhaw Tap House until this, but I'll tell you, I will be there from now on. This is going to be my place to go. Nice. It's now a welcoming yeah. place. And uh, it was beautiful to see all the people that know this is a haven now. So I think as many people as they lost, they're going to gain better people. Yes, that's right. Um, that you'd rather be around. So, but yes, they're worried. People it's are not business. so filled with hate. They lost their whole a couple of their cornhole leagues, you know, because those people were, uh, yeah, uh, homophobes. So, um, yeah, it's sad. Yeah. But, uh, now they can I do lip sync competitions. Yeah, it's going to be a better place. It is. Um, so. Yeah, but shout out to Wax Hot Tap House for standing their ground and not being afraid to uh, show the love and support. Yeah, I, I'll it's never get over death threats. Yeah. What, like, what kind of, I it's don't so know. Dumb. All right, let's get yeah, moving. But let's get on to July. <clears throat> July 3rd, 1956, we have our first birthday. Amy, Amy hates birthday. This is going to be the best birthday of all time. Amy, you're going to be so excited I did birthdays because this guy all is right. one of your all-time favorites. Really? He's an American TV talk show host born in Baltimore, Maryland. He attended Andover High School in neighboring Linthicum, Maryland, whose team colors are red, black, and silver. The mascot is the Knight. The Knights. The Fighting Knights and the notable alumni of that school are... <laughs> Tell uh, me more about him. Quit telling me this part. <laughs> I don't like Lloyd it. Keezer, a wrestling Olympic silver medalist. Anyway... Uh, this guy was elected president of his class in both his junior and senior years. He was a good student, athlete, and musician, and he was active in countywide student government issues in Annapolis, Maryland. It's Montel Williams. What? 
You're, he's, he's my ba- favorite. Your favorite. You are, aren't you? Weren't you the president of the Montel Williams fan club at one point? No, no, I was not. Oh well, Montel Williams was born. Right. He's now alive in our timeline, 1956, and that brings us to Amy's little thing on July 4th, 1956. Yes, and my source is mostly Robert Dominguez from the New York Daily News wrote an article that was okay. very uh, informative, and then Wikipedia, of course. Robert Just to Dominguez. double check on okay. the, on he the... Wrote, he wrote an article for who? Did New he? York Daily News. Okay, is that uh, that's credible, right? Yeah, yeah. All right, so you picture right. Okay. July fourth. Yeah. Uh, peaceful summer afternoon, Long Island in the suburbs. In the fifties. In the nineteen fifties, it's just like idyllic. Okay. They say that, except there's this beat up green car parked near one of these. Really expensive homes. Okay. On Albemarle Road. Albemarle Road? Yeah. An, Albemarle's a big deal down here. Albemarle Road. This North is a different one. Okay. This is in New York. And so and this was this tree lined street. Oh, yeah. Everybody likes tree lined Village streets. of Westbury. So um, the families on the block were enjoying this break in the middle of the week. Yeah. For holiday. The 4th of July. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And they were, um, they didn't really notice this car that was sitting there, this beat up old Plymouth that was sitting there. Okay. But it was, it, but it should stick out. It right? should. It's Cause not it's a, not, it's a, not a type of place where a right. beat up old Plymouth would be. And it had been raining a little bit in the early part of the day, but it had cleared up now. And so, oh, thanks for that little weather report. Yeah. So everybody's, that, you know, there's this mother. With her little newborn baby on the porch, and she's singing to the baby, and then these yeah, little seems fine. Little leaguers come bopping by. Little leaguers are probably bopping by all the time in the fifties. Um, in these neighborhoods, and the little leaguers though kind of slow down when they see this car, and they see the guy in, in the car kind of hold up a newspaper like he doesn't want him to see him. They're like that's a piece of shit car. What's that doing here? And they're like, "What's that weirdo?" Right? Yeah. What is that weirdo? I want to know. So. They just keep walking. So then uh, about 3 o'clock, sky starts getting overcast again. Okay. And uh, there's a scream that cuts through the suburb. And it is Mrs. Beatrice Weinberger, who's 34. Wait, Mrs. Beatrice Weinberger screams and everybody hears it? Yes. She had just stepped inside her house for a moment while her baby slept. And then when she came back out, the carriage was empty. So her baby's gone. Wait a minute. She went where? Wait, just anything? went inside for a minute. The baby was on the porch. Uh, on the porch, yeah, in a buggy or a carriage oh, or whatever. No. She went inside. Yeah, she came back out. Notice the baby was gone. She screamed. Yes, little Peter Weinbarger, who was only oh. thirty-one days old, had oh, disappeared. A little thirty-one day old baby. So then the cops arrive and the neighbors start to say, the you know, time, come to think of it, there's a beat up old shitty car down the we road. We did see a piece of shit car with a guy in a newspaper, right? And uh. And the car's not there anymore, strangely, oh, no. as well. So then the motive becomes clear because the dad lifts up the baby buggy and underneath it there's a note. Uh oh. And this note says the note. um the note says, I hate to do this to you, but I'm in great trouble in pencil. Okay. I am not asking for a lot of money, only what I need, and I'm very sorry about this. So they were instructed to leave the cash in an envelope under the Abelmarl Road sign post at the end of the street in the, the next morning. Yeah. But by then the house was crawling with cops and so whoever... There was, no, was there a promise to release the baby or yeah. anything? Or? The, yeah, they would give instructions on where to find the baby kind okay. of thing. But by that time there were so many police around that the, the they never showed up. Can never, never showed up. By police you mean one time? Yes. So then later that day... Um, Beatrice, the mom, goes yeah. on TV. Who is called B? And radio, and she's pleading and begging, you know, to return her baby, oh and gosh. she's sobbing what an awful, and everything. Awful situation to be in. I can't even. So then, five imagine. long days go by, and the parents hear from him again. Can you finally. imagine how excruciating those days? Would My be? God, I know. As a new, especially a new mom. Yes, you would be fucking beside yourself. So this time it was the, a phone call. Okay. And it was a husky voice like mine probably since I'm so coming like down. So gravelly sexy or more husky like fat guy? Probably fat guy husky. Okay, fat guy husky. So kind of like, so kind of like those. I got to say a side note. I love fat guys when they talk. Oh. Um, not fat guys who kidnap children. Of no. Course, but just like 
I like a good fat guy. So anyways, they asked for $5,000, and he was to put the money in a blue bag and leave it in the bushes off exit 26 of the Northern State Parkway. Okay. That way so the detectives know. are lying in wait, you know? Yeah, of course. But he Probably never shows up. Well. Again, yeah. doesn't show up. Yeah. So he had apparently gotten his parkway exits mixed up. So then later that day, he calls back with instructions to go to exit 28 instead oh, so, yeah. and leave the money. And the voice promised the mother she'd soon know where to find the baby. But this time you can't tap. Like, they didn't tap the phone. They didn't. Yeah, they didn't. So then the father did what he was told, and the detectives, again, they hid, and the kidnapper still didn't show up. So so now a week has gone by, and the FBI enters the case. Okay. And um, there's still, it seems like it's stalled out. The Weinbargers never gave up hope that their child was alive and safe, even as the trail grew cold and days turned into weeks without any new breaks and no new word from the kidnapper. Weeks now. Yeah. So what the public didn't know was that federal agents were painstakingly working on only the only leads they had. Okay. The handwritten note and the voice on the phone calls, which had been taped. So it was taped, but okay, it just so wasn't what? traced. Okay, so you lied earlier when you said it wasn't tapped. Well, it wasn't tapped. It wasn't tapped. It was taped. Taped. So it's a little different. One P instead of two P's. (laughs) All right. Yeah. So so late in August, seven weeks after the abduction, the FBI finally came up with a likely culprit. So the ransom note had this telltale quirk in the kidnapper's handwriting. They didn't specify what it was. Yeah, yeah. But it was kind of like Beverly Hills. Yeah, or like hearts over his eyes or something. Something, you know, or like yeah. like uh, then the jinx. Remember when he spelled Beverly wrong in Beverly Hills? Oh. And he had like all block letters that. and yeah, stuff. Yeah, but that something like that. kind of rings a bell. So, um, Speaking of that, did you see Adnan Syed? Yes. Got released? Yes, I'm so excited about I that. I mean, I don't know why that reminds me of that, the jinx, but just these murder shows. But yeah. I meant to mention that to you off the podcast, but I just... Yeah, I am. I'm yeah, very excited good about that. for him. I want to meet that guy. But he's probably pissed. I bet. He's I, probably I, happy now, but yeah. Maybe okay. he'll get a bunch of money. Okay. So anyway, <clears throat> so this dedicated force of 150 federal agents and the Nassau cops worked around the clock, and they looked at over nearly 2 million documents, like military records, tax returns, voter registration forms, DMV Just applications, see, look for looking for a quirk. signature Whatever that, that matches is. Yeah, that. Yeah. And they hit pay dirt finally. Uh-oh, pay dirt. That this one guy finds a file of people whose probations were about to be discharged and found a signature that matched the handwriting. Just some one guy? Just yeah. nobody famous found it? Just one guy? Just some guy. And they didn't get any recognition? It belonged to John LaMarca, 31, of Plainview, Long Island, Mm. who two years prior was busted with his father, a brother, and others for setting up an illegal still. What? A a, a what? An illegal still. Moonshining still. Oh, a still. Moonshining still. He was given a suspended sentence and a year's probation. He was a married father of two young kids, and he worked as a taxi driver, and he also owned a battered green Plymouth. Uh oh, a battered green Plymouth. Hey, aren't you the guy that drives that piece of shit? So the agents immediately haul him in. Yep. And uh, hoping the baby maybe is okay, but he did not. It took him more than twenty four hours under the lights before he finally cracked. Really? And the and the feds played back. It was after they played back the tape of his voice on the phone. Yeah. That's when he cracked. Really, because could, they could tell? Yeah, so it was this senseless crime committed by this man. He was just desperate. He uh, he had this twisted logic. He confessed to murdering the baby for the sake of his own children. He what? told authorities he was in deep financial trouble. He'd recently bought a $15,000 house he couldn't afford. Brooklyn loan sharks were after him for past loans, and he was terrified his wife and kids would soon be out on the street. Oh, okay. So he was driving around aimlessly on July 4th, and he saw Mrs. Weinbarger pushing the baby carriage in front of her house, and he just suddenly got the idea to make a quick buck. But right after the evil deed, he panicked. Under a darkening sky, he left the helpless newborn in a tangle of honeysuckle vines off Aww. exit 37 on the northern state not oh, far from his geez. home. On August 24th, a horde of cops and federal agents searched the area and found the decomposed remains of Peter Weinbarger. An autopsy oh, determined baby. the baby, placed face down in the earth, suffocated to death. Lamarca used an insanity defense at his trial that winter, but a jury, which was comprised of 12 angry fathers, quickly found him guilty. 
Yeah. He was electrocuted at Sing Sing in August 1958. Oh, he was. And despite the tragic outcome, the capture and conviction of the monster who'd stolen and slain Peter Weinbarger was hailed by the Daily News as a masterpiece in detection and a textbook example of solid, relentless police work. Mm-hmm. Although I don't want to do any propaganda here, so we'll just leave it at that. Is that a thing people say? Propaganda? Yeah. Propaganda? Yeah. Arguments were also made that the baby didn't die in vain. His abduction resulted in a charge, a change, sorry, in the law. So the reason the FBI didn't get um, involved until after a week was because that was the law. You had to, in a, in a kidnapping case, you had to wait a week before a federal Before age. FBI would get involved. And now yeah. they changed that to be 24 hours after this case, this oh, really? Peter Weinbarger kidnapping. I'm looking at the picture of this guy. I Googled him. You can just find him pretty easily. I just looked up John Lamarck in 1956, and yeah, he looks he looks skeezy. Yeah. Skeevy. And so that is the Weinberger kidnapping. The oh. story of the Weinberger kidnapping. Weinberger. Weinberger. Wein- right? Is it Weinberger or Weinberger? It, it looks on this. It's W-E-I-N-B-E-R-G-E-R. Weinberger. 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 Westbury, New York. It says the Morris Weinberger. Uh, Morris? Who's Morris? The baby's says, name was Peter. This is 1956. The Morris Weinberger Westbury kidnapper. Um, I thought his name was Peter. Cripe. Maybe Morris was the. I don't know. I don't know. I just what it's what. So it popped it's a, up. It's a picture you can buy on. Why would you? Why know. would you want to buy a picture of a kidnapper from I, 1956? I, people, I think people collect this weird shit. That's why true crime enthusiasts are a little weird to me, which I shouldn't bash our listeners. But I but. wouldn't collect, I would not collect mugshots <clears throat> of serial killers. Right. There's different levels of anything that you're into. Yes. You know, you can just be into something and like it. And, it's a cre- and I talked a lot, we had a lot of conversations during Pride with people that love true crime. And I was kind of like explaining to them, I don't like true crime, but my wife loves it, it makes me listen. Uh, and they kind of laughed at that kind of thing. But they were, like, oh, I love it too. And I was like, it's just. I'm grossed out by it and creeped out, and I right. don't want to think about it. Yeah, I, I would rather just think of funny, happy thoughts. And and they and most mostly women were kind of like, it's a thing with women because we have to know about everything. Right. We have to be aware of everything. We're yes, we're victims all the time of victims of everything. And so, but also there's a little bit of a excitement when you know you're safe and you can read about it. That's guess, right. Which I don't. I'll never get that. It's kind of like mean, a tickle. Well, just like if you're a person that likes haunted houses. To be scared, yes. It's to be scared when you know you're safe. I don't. When you know you're safe, but you feel scared, like a pretend scared. It's like a tickle, kind of. Yeah, I don't, I definitely am missing that gene or whatever, but to me, it's just like gross and sad. And I I let my brain go there for a minute just to feel like, what if that happened to me or my kids? See, yeah, I can't do that. And then I don't, and then I'm. I feel awful and right. whatever. So that's why I like to just try to make jokes uh, about it or feel, you know, and that offends people sometimes. Or I try to change the subject. Or I'll tell you what episode of Different Strokes was on while somebody was having their eyes gouged out. Gouged out. Uh, okay, well, that's good. So we'll get through the rest of these two months because it's summer of 1956. I don't have a ton of stuff. Okay. Just some things we're going to touch on. Um, and so we'll jump in to get through it all because y'all loved hearing my voice. June 6th, Major, the Major League Baseball Commissioner Ford Frick inaugurates the Cy Young Award. The first time there was ever a Cy oh. Young Award. You've heard of Cy, Cy yes. Young, right? I you know have. what that award is? No. I mean, I've heard of it, but I don't know what it's for. It's to honor baseball's outstanding pitcher of the season. Oh. It's for pitchers. Okay. And it was awarded to Donald Newcomb. Donald. Known as Nuke. Okay. And he was an African-American gentleman oh neat he was an american professional baseball pitcher in the negro leagues and major league baseball he played for the newark eagles the brooklyn dodgers and the cincinnati reds and the indians he was the first pitcher to win rookie of the year mvp and cy young awards during wow. his career he must have been amazing and that distinction would not be achieved again until 2011 when detroit tigers pitcher justin verlander uh won it um in 1949 he became the first black pitcher to start a world series game in 1951, Nuke was the first black pitcher to win 20 games in one season. Um, yeah, so he was a big deal. He was an excellent hitting pitcher who compiled a co- career batting average of 271 with 15 home runs and was used as a pinch hitter, which is a rarity for pitchers. I don't know if you know that. Pitchers usually can't hit. Very um, I just want to point out that all of the gay listeners that we had um, we had inherited have now left the podcast. <laughs> Some gay people like baseball. Lesbians like baseball. That's true. I guess you're right. So, 
welcome lesbians, new lesbian listeners. And then on <laughs> July 9th, 1956, Dick Clark took over hosting duties on Bob Horn's Bandstand. Bandstand. It was called Bob Horn's Band. Oh, was it really? Before Dick Clark took over in 1956, he started. My God. He, he was on when we, I was... When we were younger, he was on. He's when we were alive. young adults. He's still alive. He's a robot now, but he's still partially I don't think alive. Dick Clark no. Was no, he died, but he did yeah, it up until die. the 2000s something. Yeah, I know. But anyway, he took over because uh, Bob Horn allegedly twiddled with female teenage dancers. Who Ew, on the show. Uh, so they changed the name to American Bandstand. on uh, Because it was called Fingerfuck Bandstand. Yeah, it was that. called that, but they changed it. They thought, it. that's a little too on the yeah. nose. No, on July 9th, Horn was fired after a drunk driving arrest. He was replaced by Dick Clark after a period of on-air tryouts from various DJs. Horn also had been charged with statutory, statutory rape, but he was acquitted. Uh, Clark had shared afternoon DJ duties with Horn on WIF, WFILAM. Horn had been working radio and TV simultaneously, and he wasn't happy about it. So he's a dirt ball. Yeah, he's a scum. Uh, probably. I mean, allegedly. Uh, but Bandstand was then picked up by ABC, and that's when it became American Bandstand and went on to great success with Dick Clark as host. And on that same day that Dick Clark started, mm-hmm. a young actor who's changed movies forever was born. Amy, Amy hates birthday, yes. Amy hates birthday. But he's most known for bosom buddies. He was born in Concord, California on July 9th, 1956. To Peter Scolari? Hospital worker Janet and itinerant cook Amos Bud Hanks. Oh, Tom Hanks. His mother was from a Portuguese He's family. He's most known for bosom buddies. Yes. Tom Hanks is a distant cousin of President Abraham Lincoln. Really? He's also a cousin of children's host Fred Rogers, whom he played. Oh. But you didn't know that. But, alas, Tom Hanks' childhood wasn't all... He's also a pedophile, apparently. Great. Tom he, Hanks he is not... He eats babies. A, oh, the QAnon. Yeah, I'm just kidding. They think I'm totally kidding. He eats babies. Yeah, yeah. don't... Don't disparage Tom Hanks. No, he's a good guy. His parents divorced in 1960, and their three oldest children, uh, including Tom Hanks, went with their father, while the youngest, Jim, Jim Hanks, mm-hmm. uh, remained with her mother in Red Bluff, California. In his childhood, Hanks' family moved off, and by the age of 10, he lived in 10 different houses. Oh, poor kid. Yeah, poor guy. That's he, hard. Hanks was a Bible-toting evangelical for several years. And in school, he was unpopular with students and teachers alike. Later telling Rolling Stone magazine, I was a geek, a spaz. I was horribly, painfully, terribly shy. Uh, But then in 1965, his father married Francis Wong. Uh, Anyway, he went to high school in Oakland, California. Mm -hmm. Uh, He went to, he he was in plays, including South Pacific. Uh, He went to Skyline High School in Oakland. Team colors red, white, and black. Mascot is the home of the Titans. Also notable alumni, he, Tom Hanks went to the same high school as Dell, the funky homo sapien. I don't know who that is. Mr. Dabalina, Mr. Bob Dabalina, Mr. Dabalina, Mr. Saying? Bob Dabalina, Mr. Dab- You're right. you don't know that song? a stroke? You don't know that song? No. You don't know who Dell, the funky homo sapien is? No. Well, I just watched a YouTube video last night of Dell, the funky homo, he's a rapper, uh, talking about on time when... Uh, uh, God, who was it? Somebody gave him shrooms. Uh, he was shrooming with oh, Q-tip gave him shrooms, and they went to the Beastie Boys studio. And he was Jeez. and he was freaking out. And Mike D took him to Seven Eleven to get him some Fruit Loops <laughs> <laughs> to help him get over his his bad trip. Oh my God! So yeah, look that up. Look up Dell the Funky Homo Sapiens Shroom Story with Q-tip. It's pretty funny. Anyway, and he also sings Bob Dabalina, Mister Dabalina, Mister Bob Dabalina. It's a great, okay. it's a great rap song. Yeah. All righty, uh, and then July twentieth, uh, confirmation of the first. This is a science news. This was confirmation of the first detection of the neutrino by Clyde Cohen, Frederick Rains, and F. B. Harrison, H. W. Cruz, and A. D. McGuire, published in Science. So a neutrino was discovered, which is a subatomic particle that is very similar to an electron, but has no electrical charge and a very small mass, which might even be zero. Neutrinos are one of the most abundant particles in the universe. They're a form of dark matter because they have mass and weakly interact with light. But neutrinos have such a small mass and high energy that they move through the universe at nearly the speed of light. For this reason, they are known as hot dark matter. I got some hot dark matter right here for you, baby. Uh, Oh, all right, baby. Let's end the podcast and go get each other's neutrinos on. (laughs) Uh, 
Anyway, I'm just I was just amazed that I don't even fucking know what you said. I don't either. Dark, dark matter was around in the fifties, so they knew about it. That's pretty cool. And then July twenty fifth, nineteen fifty six, forty six people died in a collision Ooh, of the God. SS Andrea Doria and the MS Stockholm off the coast of Nantucket. Boom. The home of a man whose wiener is so long. <laughs> All right. Uh, he, All right. We're done with it. It itches. Anyway, that's in Massachusetts. Uh, so yeah. while Andrea Doria was approaching the coast of Nantucket. Yes. Bound for New York City. The eastbound Stockholm of the Swedish American line collided with her. Stuck in the side, the top heavy Andrea Doria immediately started to list severely to starboard <laughs> oh. which left half of her lifeboats unusable so that's the main reason people died because the shortage of lifeboats probably resulted in a lot of loss because they didn't have much so the ship stayed afloat for over 11 hours after the collision uh the calm appropriate behavior of the crew together with improvements in communications and the rapid response of other ships averted a disaster similar to that of the titanic while 1660 passengers and crew were rescued and survived. Forty-six people on the ship died as a direct consequence of the collision. Boom! That's yeah. sad. The evacuated luxury liner capsized and sank the following morning. Uh, the accident remains the worst maritime disaster to occur in the U.S. waters since the capsizing of the East London Chicago in 1915, which we will cover. Oh my in God! Eventually, when we get to that. Okay, I don't know if that's going to happen. Um, and then we're in August of 1956. All right. Are you ready to get through this? Sure. I don't have a lot. Okay. Uh, let's do some quick things. August 2nd, the U.S. passed the Refrigerator Safety Act, which made it mandatory for all fridges to be magnetically sealed. Okay. Do you know why that was? Why they decided to do that? Was it because people were getting trapped inside them? Yes. It was due to the high amount of children who suffocated in last oh refrigerators. So, Can you imagine? Yeah. It was probably a lot of people. There's probably people listening right now that know somebody whose child the, suffocated. In a refrigerator? In a refrigerator. August 4th, 1956, German Wilhelm Hertz becomes the first to ride a motorcycle at 200 miles per hour at the Bonneville Salt Flats in Utah. That's pretty fast. Can you imagine going 200 miles an hour on a motorcycle? No, thank you, bro. Was it over Snake Canyon or it anything? It was over a fire pit. Darn it. See, no, he's no evil Knievel. Snakes. Filled with snakes. No Snake Canyon. Snakes with lasers attached <laughs> to their heads. Uh, that same day that he rode 200 miles per hour, Elvis Presley released Hound Dog. Oh. Cover of Big Mama Thornton's original, written by Jerry Lieber and Mike Stoller. I still remember in college when I discovered that all of Elvis's hits were by were, yeah. cooler, better black people. Yeah. And then I was like, I stopped liking, liking Elvis, Elvis pretty much. Um, then August 6th, after going, in 1956, after going bankrupt in 1955, the American National Broadcaster Dumont Television Network makes its final broadcast. Okay. So Dumont was another network. It was ABC, NBC, and Dumont. Oh. And some other ones. <clears throat> um, Never heard of it. You want to guess what their final broadcast was? Um, Was it? It rhymes with a floxing patch. What? It rhymes with a groxing natch. A boxing match? Yes, a boxing match. Jeez. Yeah. Uh, and that's the same day that American actress from We Got It Made was born in Los Angeles, Los Angeles, California. Remember the show We Got It Made? Stop. You're not even talking about that. Stephanie Kramer. God damn it. Remember Stephanie Kramer from Hunter? No. No. She was born and raised in L.A. All right. She's part Native American. No, stop it. Side. Stop it. Graduated from Chat High School We're not talking in 1974. About her. Orange and Navy Blue, home of the Chancellors is her high school. Don't you uh, know about that? No. Okay. She went to school with Val Kilmer and Kevin Spacey, but we're not talking about Chatsworth High School right now. All right. Okay? We're not talking about that. No, good. We're not talking about the fact that her father was a classic violinist. No, stop. <laughs> okay. August 7th, 1956, Boston Red Sox fine slugger Ted Williams, $5,000. Do you want to guess what they find Ted Williams $5,000 for? Um, he was cussing on the field. He spit at, oh. Bo- at he spit at heckling Boston fans. Ooh. And it was the third incident in three weeks from ESPN Classic. I got this story. And Williams afterwards said, I was right and I'd spit again. Yeah. This is by Larry Schwartz, an ESPN guy who wrote this for ESPN.com. When the Boston fans get on Ted Williams, the Red Sox left fielder is spitting mad. With two outs in the 11th inning, Williams misjudged Mickey Mantle's fly 
and he drops it for a two-base error. The overflow crowd of 36,000-plus in Fenway erupt in boos. Not even when Williams makes an outstanding catch on the Yankees' next batter, Yogi Berra. I mean, he's playing Mickey Mantle and Yogi Berra. Give him a break, yeah, people. Yeah, really. Okay? Uh, even after that, when he he, he uh, made a great catch on Yogi Berra's ball to preserve the scoreless tie, uh, and then in the inning, the fans still don't let up. They keep booing him. As tempestuous Ted approaches the dugout with the boos far outweighing the cheers, he spits at the crowd just to make sure there's no mistake. The splendid splitter comes out of the dugout and directs another salivary attack at the fans. I love Boom. It. I love the way this is written. It's yeah. In the bottom of the inning, Williams walks with the bases loaded to give the Red Sox a one nothing victory. As he heads the first base, he throws his bat some 40 feet in the air. He just had a tantrum. He was pissed. Well, they're booing him, man. Yeah. It's like, I'm fucking trying here, bro. Yeah, really. Barra and Mantle, give me a fucking break. Seriously. Red Sox owner Tom Yawkey Yaw- hears Mel Allen's broadcast of the game on the radio in New York and calls GM Joe Cronin, who finds the $100,000 a year slugger, five grand for spitting. While Cronin says Williams told him he was sorry about his actions, William is unrepentant when he talks with the press. I'm not a bit sorry for what I did, Williams said. Hmm. I was right, and I'd spit again at the same fans who booed me today. Some of them are the worst in the world. Nobody's gonna, <laughs> Jesus. Nobody's going to stop me from spitting. They're fat and ugly, too. Yeah, I love it. Well, what, I lo- what I especially love about this is now you hear players always, every player says they have the best fans I, in the uh, world. Right. Nobody ever says, we got the worst. These are some of the worst fucking fans. Yeah. Fuck you. I love it. <laughs> And your mom's, your mom's ugly too. I love that. Okay, um, and then August seventh, fifty six, a dynamite transport explodes in Colombia, killing about twelve hundred people. Oh my gosh, that's a lot of people. Yeah, seven army trucks loaded with over a thousand boxes of dynamite uh, came from Buenaventura and were parked in an old railway station. The explosion occurred in the early hours of the morning, destroying forty one blocks and leaving a crater fifty meters wide and twenty five meters deep. The blast destroyed buildings, homes, and businesses, killing more than 1,300 people and injuring more than 4,000. Six districts were affected. The blast caused an earthquake with a magnitude of 4.3. It caused an earthquake. Wow. The noise was heard all over the place. Um, At the time, they had no idea. You know, nobody knew what was happening. Um, But the mushroom cloud, apparently, left by the explosion resembled that formed by the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, but smaller in uh, man, mutilated, mutilated body parts, including legs, arms, and torsos, could be seen. Yikes! Horrific, horrific scene. And that's uh, just a few days before Fred Ottman was born. Uh, the wrestler Tugboat. Stop! You're killing okay, me. I have to talk about this guy for one Why? second, just to tell you All one right. thing that happened in wrestling. Okay. So Tugboat was a wrestler who also became Typhoon later. But at one point, he came into WCW Switch Factions, and he made a debut, the worst wrestling debut of all time. It's known everywhere as a joke. He was the Shockmaster, and he was wearing a a Stormtrooper helmet that was covered in glitter. It was a glittery Stormtrooper helmet and jeans. He's a big fat guy. He wasn't wearing a shirt. And he's supposed to bust through a wall and come out as the shock master. And somebody else was doing his voice. So he busts through a wall and then he trips. The wall doesn't break all the way. And he trips over and his, My helmet, God. his helmet comes flying off. It did? He's this big fat guy. And all the wrestlers that are there were supposed to be shocked by this guy. But they all just started laughing. He looks like he's an idiot. idiot. He wore a stupid glitter helmet. So if you can look at the shock master's debut on YouTube, it's hilarious. Okay. So it's the funniest, worst wrestler of all time. So we don't have to go into his alma mater. No, I couldn't find that. Actually. Good. I Thank God. Anything on Thank God Fred there's Ottman. limits to the internet. <laughs> well, Wikipedia doesn't have it. So someday we'll just have to, to make up for it. We'll just try to see if we can get Fred Ottman on as a guest. Oh, my God. Would you like that? Is he still alive? Well, he is still alive. August 11th, 1956, we have an alcohol-related artist death. Oh. You know, this is a very famous artist died because they were drunk. They were drunk driving. Was it James Dean? No, artist, like a visual artist. Oh, Andy Warhol? No. No. Uh... I don't know. It was a car accident. His 1948 work, number five, sold oh, to David Oh, Picasso. Kessler. Nope. No? On August 11th, 1956, at 10.15 p.m., Jackson Pollock died in a single car crash in his Oldsmobile convertible while driving under the influence of alcohol at the time. His wife, Lee Krasner, was visiting friends in Europe, and she abruptly returned on hearing the news from a friend. 
One of the passengers, Edith Metzger, was also killed in the accident, which occurred less than a mile from Pollock's home. The other passenger, Ruth Kligman, had been thrown from the car, and she lived. She was having an affair with Jackson Pollock. Oh, man. At the time. You remember that movie about yeah, Jackson Pollock? I don't rem- Ed Harris? Yeah. I don't remember if I saw it, though. I remember being so excited to see it, and then it was like, he was such an asshole. Like, yeah. He cheated on his wife, wife. and, you know, and yeah. there was other woman, and it was like, he's a fucking dick. I don't want to know about that guy. But his art was good. But he was an alcoholic, so, you know, it's a disease. Right. Okay, August 13th, Elvis Presley releases his music single, Don't Be Cruel, just a couple mm-hmm. weeks, the days after Hound Dog. August 16th, Adlai Stevenson is nominated as U.S. Democratic presidential candidate. August 18th, Hound Dog and Don't Be Cruel reach number one in the charts. All right. August 21st, Kim Cattrall from Mannequin and Sex and oh, the City was born. All right. But did you know that she's a British Canadian actress? No. She was born in Liverpool. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, but she moved as a baby uh, to Canada. So oh, that's okay. why she doesn't have an accent. Right. And so, yeah, I also, I'm not going to go into Good. any of the things about where she grew up or any of that stuff. Good. Uh, but I was just, I only put her in here because I had no idea she was born in Liverpool. She's a Liverpudlian. Yes. I love saying Liverpudlian. August 24th was the first nonstop transcontinental helicopter flight. Uh, that arrived in Washington, D.C., 1956. How did they get enough gas in a helicopter to go across the country? I don't know, man. I don't know. I didn't look up anything about this, but it was the first transcontinental helicopter flight. It must must have built a helicopter that could hold that much gas, or maybe it runs on uh, semen. Wishes and hopes. It's got a bunch of dudes to I don't think, do it. I don't think. And then that brings us to a sad event to end August of 1956. Yeah. Of course, the 50s and 60s are not complete without horrible racism yeah uh on august 30th a white mob prevents enrollments of blacks at mansfield high school in texas this is known as the mansfield school desegregation incident in 1955 excuse me Mm -hmm. the mansfield independent school district was segregated and still sent its black children to separate rundown facilities despite the brown versus boards of board of education decision yes in 54 right three students brought a suit with the National Association of the Advancement of Colored People mm-hmm. in Jackson versus Rawdon. Mm-hmm. The U.S. Fifth Court Circuit of Appeals ruled in favor of the students. So in 1956, Man- Mansfield ISD became the first school district in the state ordered by a federal court to desegregate. This is in Texas. Mm-hmm. The school board approved the measure and allowed Mansfield High School to desegregate. Although other districts in Texas desegregated quietly that fall, The mayor and police chief of Mansfield did not approve of this measure. When school started on August 30th, they joined over 300 white people in front of Mansfield High School. Their goal was to prevent the enrollment of the three black students. The town turned into complete turmoil as three black effigies were hanged as part of the demonstration. Yes. Texas Governor Alan Shivers was a noted segregationist asshole and used the power of his office to resist implementation of Brown v. Board. Shivers dispatched Texas Rangers to prevent integration, led by Captain Jay Banks. And the police were all asshole. in on it. Yes. Who, in addition to threatening to arrest black students, he refused to take down an effigy of a black man hanging by a noose at the entrance of Mansfield High School. That is awful. Isn't this just awful? Shivers then authorized them. This is why we got to talk about this, because they're yeah. trying to keep this from being, being taught talked to about. anybody. So. Somebody's got to fucking talk about it. Shivers then authorized the Mansfield Independent School District to send its black students to Fort Worth, Texas. Mm -hmm. By doing this, the school district had effectively ignored a federal court order for integration. So after the transfer of the black students to Fort Worth, the demonstration soon ended and order was was restored. It was this success that in 1957 inspired Arkansas Governor Orville Faubus to attend a similar ordeal, attempt a similar ordeal in Little Rock, Arkansas. So oh, the, no. I think Little Rock yeah. copied off them. Uh, later that year, Texas passed a bunch more segregation laws that delayed integration even further. Uh, but uh, about nine years later, facing the lack of federal funds, the Mansfield Independent School District quietly desegregated in 1965. So federal funding got pulled because of this, yes. which is good. It's the only way. Money is the only yeah, way Yeah, that's do the it. only way. Money is the only thing that talks. So mm-hmm. then, of course, they quietly, you know, nobody right. said anything when they didn't have any money. Um, the decade-long defiance of uh, federal school integration order was one of the longest in the nation during that period. And then, in a little bit good news, in June 2020, 
a statue modeled after a stupid Texas Ranger, Captain Jay Banks, mm-hmm. called One Riot, One Ranger, was removed from Dallas Love Field, which was first dedicated in 1961, five years after the Mansfield School desegregation incident. So they took down a statue of that fucking asshole. Jeez. Um, but not till 2020. Oh, my it's God. fucking ridiculous. So this is the kind of shit like we would never know about if we didn't look for it and go month by month right. in history. So right. I think, you know, this is a reason why, you know, some people like our podcast. So we'll talk about this shit. I don't want to talk about this shit. I want to talk about fun, goofy shit. You want to talk about murders. Yeah. But it's just you, you can't skip over it. You and can't. somebody's got to fucking talk about it now that. They're trying to get this out of schools. Like, nobody would ever hear about this. I never heard about anything like this in school. But And you know what I want to say, too? Um, I get tired of people saying, like, black history. Like, it's like white people didn't have just as much of a role in that. Oh, yeah. It's not black history. It's history. It's history. That's it. White well, people were the were the impetus they were they were the ones who drove that history because they were the ones that kidnapped people right. and and enslaved them. Well, it reminds me of this conversation I had at the Pride Fest, and this and this so this whole incident reminds me too of what I saw yesterday at this Pride Festival. Like I was at in 2022 at a Pride Festival, I was watching these awful hate-filled people yeah. holding up signs, screaming at children and drag queens and. But people blocking them and getting right in their faces and stuff. It was just like that. And these people are going to be these type of assholes who are, who yes. are you know, in, in 20 years, they're going to be remembered as these assholes. But I had a great conversation with somebody uh, with an organization called Identiversity.org. Mm-hmm. Identiversity. I'd never heard of it before. Um, but it's basically uh, a resource um, that is it's education for everybody on diversity and LGBTQ mm-hmm. topics mm-hmm. that you've heard about, but don't, you know, some people don't understand. There's yeah. a lot of parents and P flag and things that are, you know, their children are different now and they don't understand. And they're just helping educate. And the lady I talked to talked about this. One thing they talk about is black history. Yeah. And is, is it, okay that we focus on all the negative stuff and all the black and why is that black history when that's everyone's history and that's the only thing you talk about is the the awful things you know and Mm -hmm. and things like that so we talked about a lot of that stuff but um but they they really it's a really cool kind of organization i just want to kind of shout out because um they're like doing a lot to educate people on uh neurodiversity trans diversity I mean, just everything and just like mm-hmm. there's so many genders and things now and gender fluidity and like different and a lot of us don't older people don't we didn't grow up with this right so we're still learning and yeah you, we don't know aren't in the community even if you are in the community it can be hard so anyway shout out to identiversity check it out um they're they're cool people but anyway yeah so more awful hate but at least there's some goofy shit that we can talk about sometimes. Um, yeah, you know that's true. And Elvis has got music out that he stole from black people, but <laughs> you know now people like us can find out about Big Mama Thornton and listen to her music because it's awesome. So look up that's Big Mama right. Thornton if you've never heard of her. And anyway, Matt Drew Mini Go Trip. Oh yeah, speaking of awesome music, I want to just say a little something about Matt Drew Mini Go Trip, who does the theme song to American Timelines, which is not a theme song American Timelines. It's a cool song called Chrissy. And you can download it on Bandcamp. Look them up on Bandcamp. They got a bunch of albums. They're all super cheap. And it's all really fucking good. It is. Anyway, and if you're anywhere you're near Northwest Ohio, check his band out. They play a lot. The Village Idiot in Maumee, Ohio. They play in Toledo. Um, but they're unbelievable. Everybody always loves them when they see them. So check out Matt Truman Ego Trip. Pay for their music. You know, just support a, a small band. Uh, in the band, um, and he's going to be the outro too. Yeah, and you're and you're going to hear an awesome song by Matt Truman, which I haven't chosen what song I'm going to play yet, but it'll be something cool. That's right. All of his fucking music is great. So, and it's time to get out of here, Chuck Berry. It is. Yeah. Thanks for listening to American Timelines by History for, for Jerks. Jerks. Oh, Matt Truman's also an ally for our new listeners from Pride. Um, he played at the Toledo Pride. So, nice. So, um, yeah. Bum. They play, I should say. Old band. Yes, Queen. Yes. Art Star, I love you. Yeah.
Matt Truman Ego Trip is the greatest band of all time by their music. <laughs> 